morning we're going to skin and prep a turkey for a life-size strutting mount. The first step we did is we removed the head. I have all my heads freeze-dried. Right now I use Anthony Eddy's out of Slater, Missouri. I believe they do the best job. I leave the skull in, probably about two inches of the neck. We made a really careful cut right between the feather line and the skin of the head. And we removed it just by cutting the neck off. And we're going to put this in a baggie, Ziploc bag, fill it with water, submerge it in water, and completely freeze it up for shipping. And we'll ship this either one or two day air, depending on the time of the year and the weather that we send it. Now that we've got the head removed, we're going to make sure that all of our wings are loose. We pull them, we work those away from the body. This bird still partially froze, so they're, they're hard to move. Get the legs opened up. The first step to skinning the turkey, I remove the tails on all my turkey mounts and do them separately. I'm going to very carefully go in and find the base of the tail. And it's hard to show you where the base is because of all the feathering, but I'm going to find the base of the tail. I'm just going to start making an incision through the tail. The anus is a couple inches or an inch below it, so there's about an inch of skin left between the anus and where I'm making the cut on the tail. There, now the tail will not be in my way. I've got a tail that I can completely clean and do my work with when the tail and mounting process. I'll lay that aside at the time. We'll prepare to skin the rest of the bird. We're gonna, gonna find the breastbone of the bird. Right here's the breastbone. We'll take a scalpel. We'll start at the breastbone and we'll cut towards the anus. Now I'm gonna go right through the anus and cut everything wide open in the back. I'm gonna have one wide open, one laid open, wide open skin all the way through. Now I use borax. I keep my hands dry in borax at all times so I don't slip with the knife, cut myself. At this time we've cut all the way through to where we remove the tail so when we open this up it will be completely open. Now we're just going to use the scalpel and very carefully skin with the scalpel and pulling with our hands. Be very careful how hard you pull, but I do a lot of pulling and a lot of pushing to skin birds. I don't like to cut at all. Work the other side down. When I get into where the leg bone is, I'm going to go in between the thigh and the leg bone and I'm going to sever those two joints and I'll start to work my leg bone out. I leave the thigh attached to the body. I use only the leg bone in the mounting process. Now you will find taxidermists that use the thigh also for a better, a better mount. Um, I've never used the thigh in 27 years of taxidermy. But as I've stated before, I don't have all the answers. I'm just giving you the answers I have. And if you learn more from others, the more you learn, the 
better your mounts will be. Just pick and choose what what you have to do in order to have a good mount and make money at what you're doing. I still believe the majority of us are in this to make money. If you're in it for the hobby and want to be the best you can be and you don't care about the money, then by far learn all those advanced techniques and we will have advanced techniques available on this in these trainings at the same time now that I've got there's my knee joint I'm going to start cutting this meat away from the bone right now I don't like to have that meat on the bone and be throwing it around the whole time that I'm skinning this bird so I'm going to completely get this meat out of my way Now I've got the joint, top joint of the leg, I find the flat side, if you feel on the bone there's going to be a rounded side, there's going to be a flat corner. I just take my snippers, I go right up next to that joint on that flat spot, and I make a cut. And it should break right off, usually pretty nice for you. Now you have to be careful though, because sometimes this is pretty sharp up here and you don't want to cut yourself. I'm going to use these tendons and these in this meat. And I'm going to try to work, work this over this joint completely so that when I go to mount this bird I'm separating the tendons and the meat to try to get just what's on top of the joint and what's on the bottom. And I'm going to keep working this skin over this joint, hopefully without ripping the skin. Now there's what I like for a nice joint. That way when I, my wire runs up, it'll come right up through this point through the leg bone. And then I'll run it along this leg bone. So this, actually what I did is I just bent this over. And got it, got my joint showing. I use the scalp a little bit more, I'll skin this down before I cut that tenon off. I want to remove as much of that tenon as I can. As I said, keeping your hands dry with borax helps make this job a lot easier. cutters and I'm going to snip that heavy tendon off. Now that's one leg free, now we're going to do the other leg. We now have both legs cut loose. At this time we're going to skin down the breast and the back at the same time, taking it all forward towards the, actually where the head of this bird used to be, but towards the head and neck. As I said, I use a lot of pushing with my fingers, probably more pushing on a game bird and a turkey than I do on a, than I use cutting. Most of it will peel. Most of it will peel right off. You got to cut some loose. You got to learn as you go what has to be cut, what can be torn, pull off. I like to stand it on its breast at this point. We'll start taking the tail down over the back.
see how nice it just pushes down you don't want to just grab and pull you want to push push right at the right at the meat and the now at this point we've got it pushed down quite a ways we're going to work where, the, where we separated the wings we got to, we hold the wing out and we stay deep enough into the wing cavity just keep working it around we'll find the joint of the wing and there we have one wing loose Spin it around. We'll repeat that process on the other side. You see I just pushed that wing loose and it broke that joint right out. Now I can just trim through there. Right here is the base of the neck. Now we got to cut this complete crawl, crop area loose. so I can get a hold of it. I'm going to pull this neck right through, just keeping pressure on the skin next to the neck. Keeping my hands dry so I can work it loose. There, I've got the complete body removed for measurements later. I've got the neck inverted. Everything right there. The next step to this turkey is we got to determine which size turkey body we're going to use. So we're going to take the measurement from the base of the neck to the tail we're going to come up with about 13 and three quarter now we're going to take a measurement around the turkey body at the breastbone we're going to come up with 20 22 and three quarters taking those measurements I use research as turkey bodies you can pick whosoever turkey body you like figure out your system when I look at this by my measurements, I'm going to need an SSB 280. Actually, in a strutting position, I'll use the SSB 282. That body is 14 and 7 eighths by 23 and a half. My body was, thir was 14, 13 and 3 quarter by 23 and a half, so I'm either going to use the SSB 280, which is a standing turkey I'd make into a strutter, or the SSB 282, which is the strutting turkey of the same, real close to the same size. That's how I'm going to determine my body. I'll write that down on the tag, and that would be my body measurement. At that point, I can discard the body. I never would eat anything that's been on a taxidermy bench. I know some people will, but... <clears throat> At this time we're going to work on the wings of the bird. I'm 
I'm actually going to open up my door of borax and get this down bird in here completely so that I can completely get as much moisture soaked up in my borax off of that wing as I can so that I can use my fingers and scalpel and start working that skin down over that wing bone. For the most part I like to pull it or push it. Actually I'm pushing with my thumb more than I'm pulling. Don't want to put any more holes in it than I have to. I still, one of the main things I do is I keep everything dry with borax. Okay, at this point right here is my joint. I've got part of the... I've got the main wing bone out here. I've got the two secondary wing bones that will run down in here. This meat attaches here and goes down into approximately here. I've got this meat up here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this meat on this first... clean this first wing bone and this first joint off. Same as the leg. There's a rounded side, there's a flat side to this. You find your flat side, you stay right, right below the joint. I got a nine inch wire cutters here, I just cut partially through that and it'll cut right off. Again, be careful of that wing bone. It can have sharp edges that can cut you real fast. I'm going to use the back side of a knife and I'm just going to completely clean this wing bone up at this time so that it's ready for mounting when I go on to the next step. Now to get that next joint out, we've got two choices. First choice that I show you, I'm not going to completely do it. But you take it, you hold the bone in your left hand or right hand, depends on which arm you are. Get your knife, use the black side of your knife. You can take and you can push these feathers right off of this bone and completely push it down to the bottom of this next set of bones and then clean that meat out. I don't like to do that. I like to leave that flight line connected to this bone. It makes the mounting job a lot easier when it comes to positioning these wings, especially in a strutting or a flying position. So I'm going to show you the second option, which means I just use my finger, I peel down as far as I can with my finger. At this point I'm going to take my scalpel and I'm very carefully going to cut these, all this meat away from this joint, from this first joint in the wing bone here. Now don't cut, don't cut through the joint so that you separate them bones. You want to leave them bones attached. You just want to get this meat loose. This is actually the meat that goes down into the second joint, second set of bones. My wings still attached back here. I'm just slowly working these down. Grabbing a hold of tendons, keeping everything dry. Got that worked down as far as I can without tearing things. Now the next step I'm going to do is going to create a little more work when it comes time to mount it, but it's going to make the overall mounting process easier. I'm going to invert this wing back. I'm cleaning these bones off as good as I can so I don't have to come back to them. At this point I'm just using borax and knife, get all the meat off all the excess tannins 
Anything I don't want left on there, I'm getting rid of. Okay, I've got this meat loose. I've got my two bones here. But I cannot remove this meat completely down in here without ripping the skin. So at this point, I'm going to invert this wing back out. I'm going to take my scalpel, I'm going to find them two wing bones on the bottom side of the wing, not the top. You go on the bottom side of the wing, you find this joint, and you make an incision here between them two bones. At that point, you can pull that meat out through there, work it the rest of the way down the bone. I made about a three inch incision there and that's going to have to be sewed up during the mounting process. But at this point, it lets me get down in there and remove all this meat down to that next joint. Scrapping it off, scratching it off, pulling it off, whatever it takes to get rid of them chunks of meat. Once you get them worked down completely there, I'll just go in with my scalpel and I'll start trimming it away from that last joint. I'm discarding it. Remember, it's very important to get this meat out because if you leave the more meat you leave in, the more chance you have of bug problems later, and the more chance you have of rotten smell to this animal. So completely cleaned out, and borax good. Now on this wing, we have one more joint left. actually a third joint when you get to the second here's the first joint first bone you got two bones here you got a joint here where it bends right on the bottom of this there's a little pocket of meat between these two bones I only left it once by mistake and it smelled after that I don't forget how to take it out I just find one of my little tools and go in there and try to get a hold of them chunks of meat and tendon and it won't look like much coming out but as I said I did left it one time and I remember and I had a stinky turkey swing for quite a while. Said. It ain't a real big piece, but it's enough piece if the air don't get at it and it starts to rot. It'll do nothing to cause you problems. More tendon than anything to get out of there. Now we've got that cleaned out, we'll repeat that step on the opposite wing. The opposite way. We'll take our scalpel. I like this crop area. It's got some really jelly feeling flesh. I like to cut some of that away before I take it to the grinder to flesh it. Otherwise it makes a huge mess at the grinder. So I just very carefully take 
the top layer of that off, being careful not to cut through the skin. Rest of that I'll take off with the grinder. I will use borax and pull some of the bigger chunks of meat off of the hide. And I'll look over the whole hide and see if there's something I can remove easier. You'll want when you go to the grinder, you'll want this wing inverted back out like like this so you can grind these pieces off, pull these pieces off ahead of time. Just work your skin over. They're pretty tough, but you'll learn. Where you can pull, where you can't pull, be very careful. Don't just grab it and start ripping because it'll pull real good and all of a sudden it'll just tear. So be very careful. The amount of pressure you put on it looks easy. I can make it look easy because of experience, but it's going to take your experience to learn in your practice to learn what you can do and what you can't. At this point, I'm going to take the other wing, repeat the process we did on the first wing, and then we'll move to the grinder and grind the excess. At this time, we're at the wire wheel on the grinder. It's just a six inch bench grinder, half horsepower. Make sure you get a good grinder if you're going to do a lot of birds, especially birds the size of a turkey. I built, I removed the shields from the wire side. I built myself a little box over it in order, and that's just to keep the mess of this burst bird and the grease and the fat from getting all over the place. I get myself comfortable on a chair. I make sure I got protective eye gear in, on as these wire wheel pieces have a tendency of breaking off and flying and hitting you. But at this time, we're just gonna work our bird. We're gonna. First we're going to work from the wing area forward to the head. I like to do that part first, get that cleaned up, then I'll move back to the tail leg area and work that completely up to the where we quit, where we started with the first step. All we're doing at this point, you're being very careful. You don't want to run this into the grinder, so you're lightly, I'll have my hand inside the bird, one hand, I'll have the other outside, and I'm just going to run it lightly over this wheel. Start to see the feather quills. On the bird. Once you see the quills, you can tell where the skin's at. As I said, right now I've got one hand inside. One thing I forgot is I always keep my Cup of borax handy so I can keep my hands dry. Very important that you keep a good grip on this skin because this wire wheel will grab it and will suck it into the grinder. Just very carefully, all you going towards the head, that's the way the feather will play. This process is repeated the same whether it's a duck, a goose, a pheasant, any upland game. I use this process of removing the meat and fat from the skin on all of my birds. up here in the neck, I can't get my hand 
and inside it, so I got both hands out now, holding on to it. I can't stress how important it is to keep your hands dry in this process, so that you can hang on to what you're working with. This time we've completely fleshed the bird. We've removed all the excess meat, all the excess fat from the skin, all the way from the tail. You can see the quills of the bird. All the way to the head, we've removed all excess meat and fat at this time. Now we're going to work on the tail. We'll lay the skin aside. At this time we're not going to be mounting it, so we're going to clean the tail bone out of the tail, we're going to turn the complete turkey skin inside right, pull the wings in, pull the legs back through so that the feathers don't get too matted down. And when we're done with the tail, we're just going to completely freeze this skin. We're going to send the head into the freeze dry place, order the body. When the head gets back and the body gets here, we will Proceed with mounting this turkey at that time. There, at this point, my skin's ready to fold together. I'll just put it in a plastic bag, put the customer's name on it, and put it away. The head I'll put in a separate Ziploc bag with the customer's name on it, how it's to be done. It'll be shipped on Monday, Monday morning, it'll be shipped second day air. To the freeze dry place. At this
this time we're going to remove the meat from the tailbone. Keeping our borax and our hands dry again. Got the tail upside down is where I normally start. With the scalpel I very carefully skin, skin back over the meat. All that meat's got to be removed out of this tailbone. I'll repeat the process on the top of the tail. You can see I'm getting the tailbone exposed. Now the tailbone's completely exposed and I know I'm at the where the quills and the meat are going to quit. I'm going to take my knife. I'm carefully going to go in where the tailbone is connected to the tail, the tail feathers. I'm going to make one cut up on each side of the tailbone. I'm going to put some pressure on that tailbone, pulling it down. The tailbone will pop right out of there. I'm going to take my scalpel I'm just going to start trimming this meat off of the feather quills because all the feather quills, once this meat's out, you'll see the feather quills. They're all protruding through this tail with about a half to three quarters inch of meat on them. We're just carefully going to cut. We don't want to cut the quills. We're just carefully going to trim the meat off of those tail, off of those tail feather quills. point and start to see we're starting to get the quills exposed. Again I'm going to move into my borax bin. So I keep my hands dry. I'll take my knife and I'm going to separate each tail feather by just going in between them and starting to scrape the fat and the meat out from between each tail feather. Feather quill. I'll just continue to use this knife to keep pulling the meat and the fat off them quills. At this point you have all the quills exposed individually. I'm going to go back to the grinder. I'm going to go back to the grinder. I'm going to take the grinder. I'm going to grind all the meat off. These areas here I'll grind a little bit left that's on them tail quills but that's what your tail should look like prior to going back to the grinder. Our tail is completely clean at this time. Our quills are separated. This tail, this tail would be ready for mounting at this time. I do, I never wash the tails. I hope there's not a lot of blood in them. Um, they're really hard to straighten back out after washing. The rest of the bird will be washed when I go to mount it, but the tail feathers I don't mount. At this time, I'm just gonna seal the bird and the tail up in the same good plastic garbage bag and put it in the freezer for future mounting.